you know, I had my success and I had my years that I really had to push through the fear and all those things, uh, you know, 2006, 2007, eight, nine, all, all those years. Um, and I, I did well and I, I did really well for myself and I, I felt really good about those. And maybe I just never set new goals or maybe I just didn't want to go through those experiences again of like just being scared all because I was dude I was scared all the time of all the tricks that we were doing that I had to do a contest over jumps I wasn't comfortable on and not even totally comfortable with the trick now like now dude I'll just go I'll do any of my tricks over any jump I've been doing them for freaking 20 years now like I don't give a shit anymore but it wasn't like that back then we didn't have everything figured out and it was it was stressful and it was scary and I pushed through a lot of that shit and I had a lot of success for back then and I did really well. And that was like, do I have what it takes for the second wave of doing all this? Double backflips, body burials. Hey everyone, it's Steve Sommerfeld here and I'm stoked you've tuned into the Riders Lounge podcast because this time we're bringing you even more awesomeness with one of the longest serving competition riders in freestyle motocross and still at the top of his game. And actually, it's someone who doesn't really need an introduction, but I'll give him one anyway. It's Adam Jones. Before we get stuck into the nitty gritty, I want to thank my personal sponsors, Custom MX Graphics, Motorex Oils, GB Orthopedics, DEP Pipes, Race Effects, and TCX Boots. And I also want to thank the Rothaus Brewery, which is based in Germany, for this podcast, for the Riders Lounge podcast, for keeping me hydrated with their Tannen Zepfler alcohol free beers as I work on these podcasts. It's a tough and grueling job, I'm sure you can imagine, to research each of my guests, especially someone like Adam Jones, who has taken enough gold, silver, and bronze medals from X Games to sink a ship. But with the great taste and refreshment of a cold tannin zapfler, it just makes this job so much easier. It's actually not the hardest work I have to do. Some of the most backbreaking, arduous work that I have to do while having a Tannen Zepfler is playing the new TIMX game, This Is Motocross, on Android. And it's also on iOS if you're an Apple fanboy. <laughs> I'm really working on turning pro there, so if you haven't seen any of the live streams yet, I'm on the Riders Lounge Facebook page doing some live stream gaming. I've probably deleted most of them because uh, there were some little hiccups with my streaming because the internet was terrible, but now I've got good internet and I can finally do some streaming. So come check it out, and I have some big news coming really soon on this new game. And if you haven't already, download it now from either the App Store or the Play Store, and I'm just giving you some notice because really soon, there's a reason why you'll want to have some practice in on this game. So I was really hoping to catch up with Adam in person at Night of the Jumps, which was planned for Munich in April. But unfortunately, that has been postponed until November the 1st. And knowing that he has so many good stories from his career, I figured I would still just chat with him now online and we can get a part two out of him next time. As we got into this interview, Adam was talking quite openly about anything and everything. And of course, one of the topics that we transitioned to was creating his own brand, the Power Up Health brand, which focuses on health products and CBD products. And I'm stoked that Adam has actually set up a huge 20% discount code just for you guys listening here. So if you're looking for CBD products or any health products for that matter, head on over to powerup-store.com Check the page out because actually there's heaps on there. And once you've added their tinctures, gummies, sprays, topical creams, and even, even there's clothing and apparel, as you go to the checkout page, simply enter in our discount code Riders Lounge 20 which gives you 20% off everything. And there's free shipping over $99. So make sure you check that out. Now you can do that while you're listening to this interview in the background on your phone or your laptop. I'll put the link in the show notes 
for this episode as well. It's quite interesting to hear how that power up hell started and Adam talks about that as well throughout this interview and actually Adam has been part of this entire podcast process from the very very start. The music in the background on that chunky chunky guitar was supplied by Adam before we even started. So thank you very much man and without further ado here is Adam Jones. <laughs> no, so have you had your coffee already this morning? No, nah, no, nah, I decided I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the streak going. See how long I can go without it. I I think uh I think I might be better without it to be honest. Yeah, what are you up to now? Day five, day six? Today's day six. Yeah, and like I mean, right. I feel pretty good. It's so weird, you know. It's always hard for me to judge how well one particular thing's working because you know, there's always just there's always different shit going on, you know, and, and it's all right, I woke up good today and I, I feel good. But is that because, you know, I haven't had any alcohol all week? I did have a wine last night, but, <laughs> you know, so it's like, can I really say it's just one thing that's making a difference or is it just, you know, collectively all things? But either way, one thing that 100% I notice uh, is like my anxiety and stress levels have completely dropped off these past yeah. six days without coffee. And I think that alone is worth finding another drink and trying to, you know, just not start my day with that. Yeah. Like it gives me the kick in the butt and like, I'm ready to start my day once I have my coffee. But as soon as I stop moving, it's like, you know, I'm searching for just random little pointless shit to do on days that I really shouldn't really need to occupy myself to that extent. You know, when you're busy, when you're busy and when you're not, maybe you should just be able to accept it. But it's like the coffee doesn't really let me accept it. And I just, as soon as I sit still, I just, the stress comes in and, and I feel really bad. So, uh, the last six days, well, the first two days, I actually felt like I was dying. Didn't think I was going to make it through, but <laughs> no <laughs> I did. way, man, now, it's got a grip on you. It's not, I didn't feel like I was dying, but it is crazy. Anybody that's ever like took a, done like a little coffee reset or took a break. It's two to three days of just complete lethargy you you have no energy no desire to do anything really it's i mean caffeine is is pretty wild and i think i think coffee's even worse just with everything else that it has in it i don't know man that's so gnarly to hear that like, you know i say, I, I know it <laughs> like i don't drink coffee that much i only have it if i'm up for a massive road trip yeah. Or I just know I'm stuffed for the day and it's like, I've got a lot of work to do. I'm going to take, I'm going to have one coffee and I love the smell of it. I love the taste of it, but I know it's not good for you. So Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing is coffee actually isn't that bad for you. So the thing that I have a problem with is just, you know, I guess we'll call it the addiction. I'm not in freaking recovery right now or anything but (laughs) you know caffeine is a stimulant it does a lot of great things for you but when you reach for it consistently at the same time every day and you rely on it then yeah it kind of has a hold on you so that's my main thing and i'd rather just get to the point where exactly what you said you know that's where i want to be is just use it when i need it not every single day because even if i woke up on a day and i had nothing to do it's like I want my coffee, you know, and like, yeah, no problem with that. Coffee does have a lot of benefits. It's not a negative yeah, thing exactly. to drink every day, especially if you just, I just drink it black. So I'm not getting Oof. sugars. Ooh. I'm not getting, yeah. <laughs> that's tough, man. That's tough. Well, I made the decision years ago. If I was going to have coffee every day, it was going to be black. I wasn't going to be putting, you know, I wasn't going to be putting any fillers in it just because I, I like to try to it's be healthy. healthy. And yeah, so <laughs> I don't want to have uh ice cream for breakfast basically by putting all that shit in my coffee <laughs> yeah oh come on what's wrong with ice cream for breakfast <laughs> <laughs> that's what pretty much all of america says when they're in line <laughs> wrapped all the way around starbucks every morning man yeah that's it like i uh, i mean like i said i i'm not into coffee that much i definitely don't put sugar in it i used to drink a lot of uh tea with sugar uh, mm. when i was younger my dad used to have five teaspoons of sugar in his cup of tea, I was on four, and wow. <laughs> I mean, and but I, I grew up that with that, and that was him. 
<laughs> that was like normal. Yeah. And then when I met Rach and she just saw me doing it the first time, putting four teaspoons of sugar in, she's like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. And so then when we moved in together and she was making all the cups of tea every day, she was gradually over, I think it was over six months or one year, she weaned me off of four <laughs> sugars down to, let's say, half a teaspoon. Yep. And one day when I actually decided to make my own cup of tea for a change and I put in four teaspoons, I'm like, oh my God, that's so sweet. What the hell? And and that was when everything just unraveled and she's like, yeah, I've been doing this for so long. <laughs> <laughs> weaning you off sugar that i just had no idea oh it's so. perfect though that's like the same thing i did with coffee man i didn't grow up drinking coffee or like even you know when i moved out i didn't start drinking coffee till probably i don't know my very late 20s or maybe my 30s and at, oh, when okay. i first started drinking it it was like it was white dude there, there was yeah. no coffee in there so i did the same thing i weaned myself off but yeah it's crazy like to me there's there's a total addiction. I don't have a problem with sugar. Like sugar yeah. is cool as long as you can control yourself. But you know the vast majority, it's uh, you know they're they're doing like what do you call it? Like the meals that the death row patients get their last meal. People do that every <laughs> single meal of their life, and yeah. it's it's pretty wild to me. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I once like i i knew sugar was bad i i've always known that but just for tea it was the only way i did yeah. it yeah i i really steer clear of, away of all sugars and things like that until yeah. kind of like the last year or two i've been a little bit bad i've been yeah i still have like man i i do love middle of a summer day i not even sponsored plug and an icy cold rock star dude is freaking good they got i know like I like them, but yeah, yeah. It's, you, you know, I'm not going to drink five or six of them a day either. I think, I think even <laughs> Rockstar would not condone that. But yeah, yeah. Like sugars, sugars are fine. Sugars are good. Yeah. Like yeah, we just all it. have to like just pay attention yeah. to what we're doing. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, we, I'm going to go back to the ice cream thing. That's the the healthiest thing you can do. I thought uh, actually when I had my first what, surgery, have an ice cream for breakfast. I was having ice cream all day long. Um, no, my first surgery was uh, I ripped three muscles off my shoulder um, and did something else. I can't remember. Tried to do a yeah. double knack over 50 feet or maybe even less. And, Smart move. Uh, yeah, didn't get back on, ripped my shoulder <laughs> to pieces. And so we had a dairy farm. And so we had two massive vats of milk full every day. And yeah. so I was drinking full cream milk straight from the vat and making two to three big, big, big thick shakes full of ice cream, homemade ice cream, of course, from mum. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was the point that I went from a 19 year old that was uh, fit and, you know, no, no fat on me at all. <laughs> and in six months, I saw a picture of me riding our farm quad bike with my, yeah. with my arm in the sling resting on my fat guts getting around the farm and i was like wow um, <laughs> snuck I, up I on thought, you huh yeah i thought i was i was taking that for calcium like i was only thinking of calcium i did not think of the sugar and the fat yeah and, uh, yeah but you know from then on i, I had to I had to think we, about it yeah we now grew up rider. <laughs> <laughs> well in my family we grew up and it was it was milk with every meal like you didn't even really have a choice in our family and i love milk man i would yeah i could drink milk with any meal at all but i just stopped with you. <laughs> like years ago i don't i don't know why like i was confused i didn't and i still don't really know because there's still a lot of talk on like the healthiness of dairy and how much you should have it i mean i know for one it's important to have full grass-fed animals to get any of your animal products from not not grass-fed grain finished and i think that's probably a lot of the problem with a lot of dairy out there now but even still the grass-fed stuff like i just for one can't afford the shit because it's like seven bucks for half a gallon <laughs> for two like i just don't know really about dairy anymore i love it but milk especially i just don't i don't drink it anymore just because <sighs> i don't know uh, as a former dairy sorry. farmer i'm i'm disappointed mate I'm disappointed. <laughs> i know me too my dad comes no. out for a week or whatever and he'll go through he used to at least he's not as bad anymore but he would go through just gallons of milk in a week <laughs> 
That's insanity, so right? <laughs> oh man, how the hell do we get onto milk already? We're, oh, we're dude, minutes, I thought it would take already... at least twenty minutes to get into milk. Straight into it, <laughs> <laughs> mate. What What are you up to today? I mean, I, I'm actually surprised that uh, you wanted to do this interview. It must be what ten o'clock in the morning there. Yep. It's on a Saturday. I'm thinking mm-hmm. it's a family day. For, if you're a family man. And I didn't even realize until I looked at my phone that it's the 4th of July. Yeah, and I, and, it is. And I, hang on, why, why is Adam Jones deciding to do an interview today? I well, you'd first be off. Probably drunk already. Set uh, off fireworks well, and we'll, burn and yeah, things. We'll save that for 11 a.m., okay? Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, we've definitely we've got some stuff planned today and we'll have a busy day, but lately with the way the world is, you know, we, we start out pretty slow and there's really no rush to, to get anywhere. Uh, my, my son is at his mom's house this week. He'll come back on Monday. Lincoln yeah. Raven are here. Kim's Kim's too. And like, yeah. they, they wake up in the morning and they just, I don't know. They just either link will play a switch or the, they'll watch YouTube or something in the morning. So they kind of, we just kind of get a little bit of quiet time in the morning, usually with, nice. without school, without anything right now. And, um, yeah, so I just figured today's a good day. I feel good this week, and I know next week might be busy. We might actually be going out and doing some camping and some other fun family stuff. So I figured I have today. Let's get it done. That way you're not chasing me around, and that way I just don't like having it in the back of my head like, oh, I need to do this. I need to squeeze this in in my busy week. I just figured, hey, tomorrow morning, not busy. Let's do it. Let's talk about milk. Yeah. I'm ready. Your busy week of holidays. No worries, mate. No problem. <laughs> so so what is your plan then? Like for this year, have you heard from anybody else about any shows cool. until the end of this year? You know where where are you sitting? I'm worried for one. <laughs> That's where I'm sitting. I'm really worried. I have talked to people and you know, as expected, a lot of things a lot of things change. So I'm not really sure right now. You know, a lot of stuff is canceled. This obviously started. It was like all the immediate events were canceling and it just snowballed from there. And it was like every week, another event even farther out was canceling. So before I knew it, my entire summer was completely blank. And, you know, Nitro had a a tour. I was actually really looking forward to a North American regional tour that was super Ah, busy and was going to be good. I mean, we actually, Nitro had great success last year on their regional tour. I think, you know, we were, we were in mostly like smaller baseball stadiums, but you know, we had up about 10,000 people at every show, which is really Whoa, good. Like, that's yeah, huge. It, was, it was awesome. It was like one of our best tours in a long time. And I think we were all pretty stoked to carry that momentum on this year. And uh, so that it didn't completely get canceled, you know, orig- like right away. They're like, guys, we're not canceling this. We're, we're going to reschedule all this and, they talked about some other dates, which I have no idea right now. I haven't heard from anybody, and I don't know if those dates are still a potential. And I can't say anything about the dates now just because, you know, you just can't go spouting that stuff off without knowing what's actually happening. So yeah, I, I honestly, I don't really have much hope in this year. But mm. at the same time, I do have some hope. Um, I was writing Monster Jam in the middle of all this stuff right when this started happening, and um, you know, there's, there's talk of them doing some stuff at the end of the year as well, but I don't know, you know, everything seems to change every, every week or two. So I can't really count on anything right now. And I'm hoping something will come up, but I I will literally take anything. And that's going to be the problem too. When stuff does start coming back is everybody's going to be in that same mind frame. And I think it's going to lead to like massive, massive undercutting at a lot of shows, which is, it's not good for anybody, but everybody's in a bad way right now. So can you really blame people for, you know, trying to trying to feed themselves or their families or or keep all the things that they've worked for their whole life? That's it. Exactly. Like, I, I'm not going to get too political on this at all, but it in I terms will. of the sport, definitely it's this is this sucks. Like, yeah, we were events where we are in events and we were the first to go and we mm-hmm. will be the last to come back. Like, It'll be interesting to see who's around at the end of it all. That's it the, is. the problem. It's, so, yeah. And yeah. I know you said you don't want to get political, but I will a little bit. I'm <laughs> I'm fed up with this. Like I I don't a hundred percent buy it. You know, like and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I don't 
buy that there's a coronavirus. I 100% buy that there's a coronavirus. I don't buy the severity. You know, like a lot of – there's been – every day it's like people are arguing on Facebook, and I don't want to argue with anybody because I am no great source of information. But I feel like I have the ability to look at both sides and, you know, kind of say, well, that, that seems pretty ridiculous. Even on my own side, you know, like I'm not – I'm not married to any idea here. And I see, I know a person that in that, like a, a close friend, I'm not going to name any names because I just don't think that's right. I've never asked them if I can yeah. go blasting their story off to everybody, but they had a family member, very old that got sick, went to the hospital during this time in hospital, he had five coronavirus tests and they were all negative. So mm-hmm. succumbed to old age, whatever it was, not even really sure what the actual cause of death was, but he is on the official coronavirus uh, count in America for oh. coronavirus deaths. So the family is pissed about it. They're they are fighting with the doctors. They're saying they want this reversed. And the doctors, all they had to say was, well, yeah, he might have failed his test, but he was showing symptoms. So he is an official COVID death where he obviously didn't die from that. He was older and shit in the hospital, had five negative tests. So that, for one, makes me question the death count. I'm one person and I know one person and I've heard not as close as this one of two other instances in fairly close friends, but I can't confirm those, you know? So I don't know. This is one that I can confirm. So that makes me wonder about the actual death count. And then the actual case count is interesting to me too, because what was everybody saying right from the get go? They're saying, Oh, well, we, we don't have many tests. We can't test that much. So we only said initially, oh, there's only been 100,000 coronavirus. I don't know what the numbers are. I'm just saying. Yeah. They weren't testing like everybody. They had these dudes that are doing antibody studies saying, look, we think the, the number is actually way higher for infected people. Well, guess what? They were debunked on the internet like always is when it doesn't fit the agenda. And then now we're testing more. Case numbers are going up. Deaths are not going up. And now people are freaking out about that. And it's like, well, we're finally just testing a lot of people. And I don't know. I might be wrong and I might be an idiot. All I'm getting at is I don't fully trust what's going on here. And to say that there's a global scheme going on here is sounds completely ridiculous to me too. Like I can't believe that as well, but like, I just think it's so strange what's going on in America right now. And personally, I think it's just all, it's all a political agenda to get rid of Trump. Like they, they don't want him and they will like our lives are games or are pieces of a game that they play for shit that they want. And this is something they want. They want him gone. And all the stuff that's going to happen to us in the meantime is just going to be, you know, uh, a part of the game. No big deal. No sweat to them. So I hate it. I'm really mad during this time watching, watching my bank account go backwards, not Mm -hmm. having any purpose, any drive, any, anything at all. It's like, it's super frustrating for me to watch this all happening to my personal life after an 18 year career of hard work, I'm watching it all kind of crumble and go away right now over what I think to be just political bullshit. And it's super frustrating to me. That's it. This is the, there's a major problem. And and that is everyone is feeling the, the pinch massively. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the moment, there's nothing you can do. Like it's, absolutely nothing. It's a virus, and uh, a virus does what a virus does. And yeah, I mean, fuck, it is what it is. And and again, we're in events. Where where the last ones? Like you yeah. know, pubs oh, can know. open back up, and and well, kind of. They they've actually been closing of. a lot of them down back in the states again. They open them up, and a bunch of states are out actually now closing them again so restaurants no more dine in no more bars no more no more nothing out in most places in america again yeah it's pretty pretty rough over there like here in germany uh it sort of feels like everything's pretty much back to normal so yeah it's not not too bad in terms of that um and you know then i'm talking to friends in russia and they're like oh yeah we're going to soccer games and 10 percent capacity of stadiums um, yeah. And they're talking about maybe 50% increase uh, of oh, 50% of the capacity of stadiums. And I'm like, man, that's almost back to completely normal. Like yeah. you could run events again, hopefully there. So, uh, you know, let's, I, I'm still 
hopeful. Yeah, I'm still, for sure. Well, we know, have to be. I'm, I'm, really I'm, have... I, I'm, I'm a realist. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I know where this is heading for 2020. But yeah. uh, I am also still hopeful we've got some events. Like, I mean, for you and 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 I as well, for Night of the Jumps, like we've still got September 5 in Basel, Switzerland, October 10, Cologne, Germany, and November the 1st in Munich, Germany. So they're still on the books. They're still yeah. selling. Well, um, let's, let's so keep I'm, our fingers I'm crossed just, for those. Yeah, exactly. I'm keeping my fingers crossed because pretty much I'm just sitting at home and no, Actually, dude. no. I, I I am doing a lot of work, but it's all it all feels kind of like for nothing, you know. Yeah, but, I agree, um, man. Like I feel the same way. It's it, it's tough to stay motivated, and it's like some weeks, some weeks I'm I'm in the gym and I'm working hard, and before I hurt my shoulder, I was still doing some riding and staying active. But there's just no there's no like uh, I don't know there there's nothing that really makes you feel accomplished for me at least in the yeah. current situation that makes me feel accomplished like. I'm just kind of floating. I'm doing my thing. Like there's, there's always been, you know, a great reward for me emotionally from going and writing a show and, and putting on a good performance and getting my yeah. paycheck and bringing it home. And, and then coming home from that weekend, it's like, ah, oh, yeah, I worked. I'm back. I cool. contributed, you know, and yeah. like, I don't have that now. And it's been, it's been tough. Like I've been up and down some weeks. I, like I said, I, I do that and I stay motivated and, some weeks I freaking I just drink beer all week, which sounds like shit. But it's like, how I'm, does that sound like shit? Because it, <laughs> it makes you a worthless asshole, basically. Like I, <laughs> when I like I'm just not doing anything to to progress my life. Like sure, beer is good, beer numbs the pain, but like I know why I'm doing it, and it's because I can't find like a real good feeling. I can't find that positive just like, ah, I did it. Today was a good day. And like, believe me, I've yeah. had some good days. I'm not saying like, oh, life sucks. Pity party me and everything. I'm, my family is great. And like me and Kim get along so good. It's it's great to be home, but it's hard to be home stress-free when you didn't decide to be, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's not like I had an injury and I'm just like, okay, I got to sit for six weeks and then I'll be, boom, I'll be ready to go again. Right now, it's like you said, we're, we're just all kind of floating and we don't know when we'll be back and we don't really have any purpose and it's it's a real stressful anxious time for me and i i have a hard time just letting go and being like oh eight yeah. months of vacation no big deal you know actually that's kind of i mean i'm not because i'm i'm doing more work now with no events than when we had events when we've got events on you just know like okay, something's coming up in the next month, get ready for it, get you guys ready and tickets booked. And that's kind of easy. But when there's nothing and you're hoping and trying to work out 2021, yeah, man, where, where I'm so busy and, and everyone's so busy, but yeah, yeah for me personally, like well, I, I'm not even good, writing, man. so it doesn't matter. I, I can't even ride freestyle anymore, but uh, mm. I was thinking about it. If I was writing, would I look at this like, ah, I've just had a crash. I've broken my leg. I'm off the bike for two months, but this time I don't, I'm not off the bike because I'm broken. Like I can actually enjoy it, but I guess yeah. by the sounds of it, you're not you getting can't. that feeling. And I haven't talked to anybody who can enjoy it, to be honest. Like it'd be one thing if <laughs> let's say if I didn't get divorced X amount of years ago and I still had my retirement savings fund, yeah, maybe I could enjoy it, but yeah. since I got divorced, I've been on a just a charge basically to take everything I make and invest it in something that's going to help me once yeah. I decide to quit. So I don't have massive amount. I don't have hardly any money saved, you know. And I think that's yeah. a lot of freestyle guys now are in the same boat because the money's all but dried up basically. And but either way, it's like if I had, you know all the money in the world, like, sure, man, I could just be like, oh, cool vacation. But I think, like I said, the problem is none of us do. And I haven't talked to anybody who is taking it that way. Uh, as far as like, ah, vacation, whatever, you know, like everybody that I've talked to is in the same boat, you know, like, yeah, it's pretty rough for everybody. I would say that there's one guy that I've been talking to a bit who is in that boat. <laughs> yeah. Squibby. Squibby oh. is loving it. He is just <laughs> like, he he hasn't ridden his bike in months I think he's just been yeah. like he's got these really cool uh, like his house is in these deep dark woods 
and he's just been building mountain bike trails. Like he's just riding mountain bikes full yeah. time. So he's oh, that's like, good, man. I wish more yeah. of us could adopt that same attitude. Yeah, I mean, he's got no money, but uh, he's just riding mountain bikes. So. <laughs> I guess I guess some people just, you know, that's good to not concern yourself with money. Is a, that's a positive trait, and yeah. I don't give a shit about money. I don't give a shit about vanities and just you know possessions and stuff like that i want to be stable you know i want to know my mortgage is going to be paid for not just this month but down the road like i don't want to bounce my family around in and out of places and i don't want you know and i don't want to i don't want to have to lose things have to sell things off to survive and i don't and i want to be able to like go on simple little vacations and enjoy ourselves so I guess yeah. that's me worrying about money, you know? So right now I can't do, I'm not going to go spend a couple thousand dollars over the summer vacationing and having fun and doing all this stuff. When I'm like, well, I only have X amount of thousands left right now. Yeah, like yeah. when I look at this, I just go bad investment, bad idea. Don't do it right now. Wait. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> so that's my fault. And I wish I could be more like squibby with this sort of thing, but it is, yeah. I think it is tough for everybody. I've, I've been wanting the ability to slow down for a long time now. And I can't because I, you know, I have just personal financial goals set to just have a little bit of financial freedom. So I can't, I can't do that. But also it's like I said, when it's not my decision to, to take the time off and slow down and I know I'm not ready, that makes it really rough for me to try to deal with. Yeah, I can totally imagine. You you did mention there before about like the good old days, and and those days are gone. And oh, I, so I, gone. I I did have that uh, question written down a little bit later, but I'm going to ask you about it now. Tell us about the good old days because you have been there pretty much from the start. You're still there now, and the crazy thing is, you're almost exactly the same age as me, and I did not in uh reap the benefits <laughs> you could say of the good old days because i was a pussy and i didn't flip until like 2012 so i missed the good old days but it's tell a us about when you that look back on it right and you're like dang it oh. dude like now that i flip it's so damn easy why didn't i just make myself do oh, it back then <laughs> man i was riding with shui i guess since like 2006 and we were in the foam pit like every week he was yeah. working on real tricks. I was just doing a straight backflip over the 45 foot super kicker. Yeah. And I just hated the kicker. I was just going so yeah. high. You can't control, well, you can control the flip, but it's just so easy to flip and to over rotate. It's, yeah, they're and harder I, to flip than 75s for sure. Yeah. And, and I just never wanted to take it to dirt. And so from 2006, he was always saying to me, I've been talking to Krusty. They, they're, they would put you on the tour if you can flip. And that was 2006 and I never <laughs> did it until 2012. Six years so, later. <laughs> yeah, so I, I missed the glory days. But yeah, tell us tell us what it was like back then. Like, was it really full rock star life, like making good money, not giving a shit? You were young. I don't know. It was, it. it was pretty damn close to that, man. And I hate yeah. Crying the sob story all the time. And I try not to really cry the sob story too much on social media, more or less throwback to to better times in my life when the opportunity arises. But um it it was pretty freaking awesome, man. I started uh I started freestyle in two thousand two and back then we had dude, we had so many IFMAs a year and they were fun, you know, and they kept us yeah. busy and then um yeah, X-Games I was watching them on Fuel all the time. Yeah, yeah, they used to get TV coverage and stuff. And um, so 2004, did my first X Games. And <clears throat> sorry about that. No worries. Just kind of, <laughs> that was where it all really started. 2005, 2006, 2007. I mean, it was it was pretty freaking crazy back then. And I don't know, like it wasn't, for me, it wasn't like rock star life. I mean, I was married back then. Wish I could change that one up but <laughs> I, I, uh, one, one minor detail in there we we i mean we did like i'm not trying to sound like an asshole talking about this but like i don't have a i don't have an issue talking about money i'd never talk about money to rub it in anybody's face or anything mm. like that i think it's part of life and whatever man if you want to talk about it talk about it and if you don't don't but yeah. back then we made we made a shit ton of money you know i wasn't even like one of the the highest paid dudes. There was, there was guys that made much more than me back then. And, and I know I 
probably starting 2006, I'd say. What did I get? Did I get a silver in 2006, I think? Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Yep, I did. So starting about the 2006 time is when I got a really good contract. Well, I had a bunch of really good contracts. And I mean, I didn't have to chase down shows. We wrote our contests, which were super stressful. But yeah. still, we wrote our contests. We wrote X Games. We wrote Tour. We wrote X Fighters. And and I did some contests around or some demos around as well. And I mean, I, I would make between five and 600 grand every year back then. Man. And you didn't have to chase it like you do now, you know, and there wasn't, it wasn't as just death defying as it is now either. And That's as time went on, yeah, as time went on, contracts just, you know, they got a little smaller, which I don't blame anybody for that. You know, it's just, it's the way it goes. Our, our sport went from being like really in the public eye and people were really into it to people who lost interest. And that's just going to be part of life. It's something that we're just, you know, you got to deal with it. You're exactly, you're not it's, in control of what society deems cool or not cool. You just got to ride the wave and take it as it comes. And I think we're pretty lucky that we can, even though we're not this big time thing anymore, I think freestyle motocross will always be a good demo sport. You know, it's always going to be a good thing to have at the county fair or to have it some event on the side or something like that. So I think there's always going to be opportunities, but yeah, I, I don't, so. I don't know if there's too much of a chance for it to ever be back, but as far as rock star life is concerned, like it, it was freaking scary back there. You know, even yeah. though we didn't have all the flip combos and stuff like dude, these courses that we would show up to, to ride X fighters, mainly they yeah. were super intimidating. And, and like you went there and now, like, okay, I'll go to a Nitro event and I'll have some beers with the boys the first night. And if it's a two-night event, you know, we'll finish the event. We'll have some beers the next night. And sometimes maybe we'll go overboard and sometimes we won't. Dude, I seriously <laughs> think the dog just walked into the room, ripped a <laughs> nasty-ass fart, and then left. <laughs> yeah, it was the dog. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, seriously, <laughs> blame it on the dog. But that's that's how it goes now. Back then, you know, I remember going to Moscow, Russia for – uh, for X fighters and that course, it looked pretty standard, but it was, it was, it was a scary course and it was hard to figure out a run on. And I remember like, dude, we were there for so many hours a day because the way practice worked is we'd ride in the morning. We'd have a couple hour break in the afternoon, not usually long enough to go back to the hotel. And then yeah. we'd have more practices in the evening. And all this time, I don't know anybody else that was just cruising and having fun riding. This was like figure out our runs, how like we got to get our runs figured out. And I just remember like, dude, I would, I would sleep until the bus was ready to pick us up in the morning. And I'd come back and hit the pillow and just go straight out until it was time to wake up for the bus the next morning. Like they, they were scary times. You know, we, we all worked hard at it and we all enjoyed it, but it, it wasn't like we were rock star life out partying and, just enjoying the shit out of life like those contests yeah. they were tough but it was cool it was so fulfilling to do something like that and you know i wish it would come back around but i don't know it would take a lot and one of the things it would take is somebody willing to put in a lot of money to make cool courses again and i don't really know who's gonna do that yeah i mean that's the thing like when i look back on those x fighters there was some oh, some of those courses were so gnarly you know the, the transition from the landing to the next takeoff there was no transition yeah it was just a same with dude tours there wouldn't even be there wouldn't even be a flat spot it would just be straight into it yep yeah and and like in a way that's cool because you're showing who the real good rider is which is fantastic but uh man when it comes down to safety and you're trying to i don't know if you've got to click gears or get your foot hook in or flip your levers up obviously you're going to work out which tricks you're going to do. So you don't have to do any of that crap. Yeah. But if you've got that split millisecond where you're like, oh, I should be really be backing out of this. Mm -hmm. You can't, there is no back out. You're going for it. Yeah, no, I agree. But definitely, man. And that made it more dangerous for sure. But it's also another thing that made it more exciting, you know? And I think it was part of what, uh, what made it, what it was when it was, was that, yeah. It was pretty freaking exciting. And uh, I honestly, I don't know what it 
ever was that made X fighters throw in the towel on the full tours. I'm not sure, but I think that was a big part of it uh, that they stopped doing that. And obviously X games went inside and just started putting super tiny courses together. And <laughs> I, I mean, we went inside in Minneapolis and yeah, we don't have much room there, but man, we were at uh, what's it called? The in in Texas stadium of the Americas oh, or, or circuit of the Americas. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that was terrible, but we got all the room in the world. We had a circle course there too. So like <laughs> it, it was honestly, they, they just stopped putting the effort and the time into it. And I guess before that was staples indoor. And I think yeah. a couple years of that were okay. But then I think people just really started getting bored of that. It's like, okay, yeah. circle here, circle there. Like part of, I think the excitement always was, walking into a stadium or, or turning on the TV and just seeing this massive course with stuff everywhere. Like that exactly. sets you up to be excited. Exactly. That's it. The, the good thing about Staples, was it inside Staples where the best mm-hmm. trick was? Yeah, that was, that was well, yeah, Staples cool. best trick was inside, but also yeah. um, uh, Freestyle Moto was inside the last, what, four years or something in yeah. LA? Yeah, and that was so boring. That, yeah, I think it was yeah. three years. Was it three or four years? Yeah, I know. I I medaled twice indoor, and then one year I got like fifth or sixth or something like yeah. that. And I think those were the three indoor years. It sucks because like, like I think, as I just said sorry, it, I just said it was boring, but it's not boring because I'm fucking so pumped because all I wanted to see was just tricks at X Games. Who's got the biggest ones? And in yeah. theory, you're gonna see better tricks on a easier course, mm-hmm. but it just lost that appeal. At least well, best trick. when you're watching best trick, it was cool. Cause yeah. you know, there's always that anticipation. Like what mm-hmm. are we going to see here? One yeah, shot. That was cool. And that stopped too, where people start, they, <laughs> I'm guessing ran out of new shit to do, which yeah, I don't well, blame them. No, but I think, too. I think those staples courses, they worked when they were mixed in between other big courses. You know, if you followed freestyle motocross, you saw X amount of big courses a year where it's like if you played your cards right on one of these big X fighters courses, you, you couldn't do all your biggest tricks in one run at most yeah, times. Sure. You had yeah. to make it work. So back then it worked because we did what we could on these big courses. And then if you got to a circle jerk course, you could do all your big stuff. And then it's fun to watch because it's like, Oh my gosh, a run of like everything gnarly. That's unimaginable because yeah. you've just watched X amount of rounds of like, well, you know, I had to do a secret grab indie over this one because it was a hip and like no yep. foot of can here when it, it's still a fun run, but it's, it's diversity of what you're yeah. watching when all we're watching is dudes going around in circles and hitting two ramps over and over again. It does suck, man. And like, I, I wish there was somebody that had the money to, it doesn't suck. It's just standalone. It kind of, it needs something to break it up that's but, it no i yeah. completely agree with you on that and uh and that's exactly why we came up with the uh the free ride with the dirt diggers last year i would have loved to have had you there for that one yeah uh, i can't remember what was going on if i had another event or something think, at that time but uh, i think it might have was it a nitro tour or something mm. oh, i don't know whatever it was yeah but, something like that but yeah basically like that's what what i was thinking is that with you know, going around in circles is fantastic. Like when you can only get inside arenas in winter. Yeah. Perfect. That's that's all you can do. Um, but yeah, to get outside again was awesome. And I'm glad we did it. And, I, and it proved that the concept, of course, the concept works. Everyone loved yeah. it. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's basically what I've been working my backside off the last, well, the last few months that we've been in Corona times. But Can you um, do one in Reno? I don't really have a good travel budget right now. Uh, <laughs> you put me in touch with the uh, the mayor or something, and yeah, let's, let's have a chat. Let's, <laughs> yeah, I know. Let's see if we can find some sponsors. I know. I'm no uh, big deal. Exactly. So back in the old days, mm-hmm. you you have invented that many tricks, and you're still doing them now, and you're still doing well in competitions. I can't even remember all the tricks, but stripper flip for sure. Yeah, um, well, I mean, good. some of guys yeah. are still doing that, and everyone's still losing their minds over these tricks. <laughs> it it was an easy time to create oh, new tricks. I never did I, a strip of flip. <laughs> all right, it, it wasn't the tricks weren't easy, but it was <laughs> it took no creativity. You know, it was yeah. just like, hey, we're you know we're doing this right side up. Maybe we can right. do this upside down. Mm-hmm. So that was that attributed to a lot of it, and the rest of it was 
uh, inspirations from other people as well. Like, what was it? Dane Kennard always did turntable, no hand can. I thought that was the sickest yeah. thing in the world. So yep. I just threw a saran wrap on the end of that. And there's my little flair to it. And Brian Dowdy used to do massive, no handed Shaolin's bigger than I could oh, ever do. Yeah, I remember yep. them. Yeah. Yep. At the 2004 X games qualifier and X games, he was doing them massive. He was doing almost like starfish, no yeah. hand Shaolin's. It was insane. Yeah. But they then were I just, ridiculous. yeah, just took that and, added a McMets to it and there's my little flair. But other than that, you know, it was just first one to Cordova flip to dirt and did the Shaolin flip like a couple days before X games, 2007 and stripper flip was working on that for months leading up to X games. I actually thought in 2007 stripper flip was going to be my X games trick. And okay. then it just last minute I was riding at Ronnie Feist house last minute. Just, I honestly think it was, like a night before I was leaving Feist to go to X Games. And I started going like, man, if I can use this little flip lever to get one foot through the bar for a stripper flip, like why not try to get both? So yeah. I just started trying it and uh, I was doing little little bar hop flips and Deegan was actually there hanging out watching and Feist was there and I started trying to do these little Shaolins and they were, I think they were so little because even that night Feist was telling me like, He's like, yeah, dude, I, I honestly think just the regular bar hop looks better than trying to Shaolin. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah. oh, man. And I kind of just decided not to listen to him and do a, a Shaolin anyways, which worked out because that was the one that got me uh, second place and best trick and probably had a lot to do with with me getting the gold that year in freestyle. Yeah, definitely. Exactly. Actually, what was the gold that year? What was what? what? What was uh, gold? It was Loza, one of Loza's tricks. Ah, yeah, one of the electric dooms and electric, electric something or death electric. something or I don't yeah. know something very emo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor guy. He, he was out there innovating, but yeah. no, he did. He actually did some really cool stuff. I, yeah. I was a fan of the tricks that he was doing. You're a fan of it, but I haven't seen you do any body burials. No, I years ago I tried some in the foam pit, and I don't know, man. I think just with a little bit of age, I, I didn't really want it that bad either. And a couple bad goes in the foam pit, and I was like, "Screw this, dude! I'm not. I'm done with this stuff." Yeah, it, it's kind of hard, you know, when you've had, you know, I had my all my big success around between 2006 to, to 2010, I'd say like 2010, yeah. I think 2011 was my last medal, but that was super unexpected. Okay. My main success was, what, was, it? what two, was the uh, 2011 medal? 2011, I got silver in staples and I actually tied for gold with Taka and it went to second run score. And I just, my, my first run I messed up on. And then no my second way. run, yeah, my second run, I killed it. And me and Taka tied but his, you know, he had a solid first run. So he took gold that, that year. Wow. But I was just, I just went there to do my thing. You know, I just wanted to qualify and put a good run in on TV and I didn't expect it. So that was like, yeah, that was a pretty unexpected one. But Man, what kicking I was, goals with both feet. <laughs> what That's I was cool. going to before that is, you know, I had my success and I had my years that I really had to push through the fear and all those things, uh, you know, 2006, 2007, eight, nine, all, all those years. Um, and I, I did well and I, I did really well for myself and I, I felt really good about those and maybe I just never set new goals or maybe I just didn't want to go through those experiences again of like just being scared all because I was dude, I was scared yeah. all the time of all the tricks that we were doing that I had to do a contest over jumps. I wasn't comfortable on and not even totally comfortable with the trick now. Like now, dude, I'll just go, I'll do any of my tricks over any That's... jump. I've been doing them for freaking 20 years now. Like I don't <laughs> give a shit anymore, but <laughs> it wasn't like that back then. We didn't have That's everything cool. figured out and it was, it was stressful and it was scary. And I pushed through a lot of that shit and I had a lot of success for back then. And I did really well. And that was like, do I have what it takes for the second wave of doing all this double backflips? Yeah body burials and not to mention this was the same time that some of my buddies started dying so yeah um yeah, that yeah, also exactly. you know took a little win from the sales and um kind of made me just think 
I think I'm content with where I'm at right now. You know, I always push to be better with what I'm doing and what's within my grasp, but I don't yeah. think I need to reach this far anymore. Yeah, I, man. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right because you've just got to see your friends go and mm-hmm. put perspective back on what the hell are we even doing this for? Like, I know why I did it. I just did it because I loved it and as a kid i just loved watching sink mars and heart and whoever and jeremy mcgrath and all that yeah and, and i never ever in my life ever thought i'd do it as a job yeah and then you know like i got to those points like i i never actually aspired to be a champion of anything i love writing comps the comps are fun like just mm-hmm. doing small comps um but I never wanted to be the best. I never had that yeah. goal. I always just wanted to do what I did the best I could do, basically. Yeah. But but yeah, I, oh man, like to, to do the flip. And like I said, it took me six damn years to do the flip because I was such a damn <laughs> pussy and I always overthink everything. Yeah. And then when I finally did the flip, I got out of the phone pit and I ne- I went back in a couple of times purely because i was riding a different bike once with pretty shitty suspension i just wanted to just do one flip and oh yeah it yeah. was shit suspension and i did fuck it up so i'm glad i went the phone <laughs> um, um and there was one other time and but that was it and i was just happy to flip all day every day on dirt and just slowly 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 yeah, work on tricks and it's exactly you know, how i did it too man and and when I got to the point like that I could turn up to a show and, you know, to do a show, all I worked out was I needed an upright ruler or tsunami, whatever you want to call it, um, a backflip ruler or tsunami. Mine wasn't a ruler, definitely. It was just like <laughs> a, a bit bigger Superman yeah. uh, in, in the Lego man position um, and a whip. And I didn't really spend much time on whips. So actually the last few years uh, before my crash, I really spent a lot of time just trying to get a whip that I was comfortable on a mobile landing because I've seen so many guys miss the landing oh. and I've, I almost missed one, um, you know, with the, the mesh takeoff and yeah, I, I don't know. I just didn't have the technique and fuck man, I was like within inches of missing the landing. So I, oh, I just had dude, this yeah. deathly fear of whips on yep. mobiles, but, but yeah, like then I always thought about, oh, I would love to try varials and I'd love to try flares and I, I don't know if I'd love to try a double flip, but I thought of trying a double flip. Yeah. And then I just thought, like, what is the point? Like, yeah, I'm exactly. I'm never, ever, I never wanted to be the best. And I'm already 10 years too late anyway for those tricks to even think yeah. that they're going to be the best. Why the hell would I go back in the foam pit and stress myself out again like I did? Ye- yep. well, I, I cr- had years driving to Shuey's place yeah. and then driving to Clinton Moore's place, like two hours to Shuey's, four yep. to Clinton's. And I'd drive there just sweating and oh, like man, white knuckles. And, you don't sleep and, the night before. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. And then you've got the two of them just calling you a pussy and saying, <laughs> get out of the damn phone field. I'm not going to put yeah. you in there. And we, then driving yeah. home, just screaming at yourself like, fuck it. You did, you know, like in one weekend, I probably did 50 flips. Perfect. Yeah. But and then you're like, you I'm going to do it tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow's the day. I'm going to do it tomorrow. Exactly. And then you get back out there tomorrow. You're like, oh, gosh. Yeah. I was pretty lucky that I had Mason, Miller, Bubs, Berlou, uh, yeah, all those guys. We, there. And we all were trying it at the same time. So yeah. we uh, that helped to do it. And I was lucky enough just to force myself to pull the trigger early and make myself do it. But those were scary times. I mean, I had a lot of lot of those days driving up to the place and just being like oh my gosh i don't really (laughs) want to do this and but doing it anyways and then i remember being on crusty tour one time and my first crusty tour i went over to flip i i did we had three shows in new zealand that was my first ever crusty tour and my first one was good it was at christchurch inside and we were on dirt and then we went on to like that whatever their flooring was and i started every flip was just more and more under rotated. And like my last really? flip that tour, yeah, I almost completely under rotated. Whoa. So yeah, uh, I was like, Oh my gosh, then maybe this isn't for me. Went back home, practice a little bit. And then I came back and I was still struggling for the Australia tour, the next one that we did. And then it was crazy because one flip, I remember one flip, I went and I pulled and I 
all of a sudden like over rotated the shit out of it and was like, what the hell just happened? Where did that come from? And it was like snap of a finger. All of a sudden I knew how to flip. All of a sudden it was like, huh. dude, I just, I over rotated and I know what I did. And like, wait a minute. And I just went back and then, yeah, on that tour, I, this was, you got to remember, con- put this in context. This is like 2004. Yeah. So yeah. I started doing one-handed flips on that tour and knack knack flips and whip flips and heel clicker flips all on that tour like figured them all out on those mobiles on that tour it was just it was seriously like snap of the fingers i figured it out but what i was going to say earlier is i don't think that happens with body burials and stuff like that you know i see clint who's been doing them for how many years and he's the man at them and it's still on 10 yeah and it still shakes him up a little bit and i don't I don't want to have tricks like that in, in my bag anymore. I'm especially now I'm too old. I mean, to be honest with you, I thought about it since coronavirus started. Cause I'm like, motherfucker, I really need to make some money now because I just lost a year. I'm off schedule. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, maybe, maybe I'll go double flip and front flip and everything. But the reality <laughs> no, really, is you were thinking about it yeah, for a minute. And then I'm like, that's uh- not a good idea. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I just, I don't, I don't have it anymore. I had a, I've had a great career up to this point and I I've kept up on my riding enough to still get invited to most things and to still uh, get to ride a lot of demos and to still be considered good at what I do and valuable asset to, to people's shows. So I think, um, you know, that's, that's a shift in what I want right now. And it's what I want is to continue being that rather than to win shit. But tell you what, it really messes with you to be a guy who used to win shit and used to be the man and not being anymore, you know, like yeah. it, it's not like I'm not crying myself to sleep about it, but man, you miss that. Like I did have that fire. I did want it that bad. And I can't blame anybody but myself. I don't want it that bad anymore. Yeah. But you miss it. You miss, I miss the feeling. I miss the, the, the feeling of accomplishment and success and standing on the podium at the end of the night and, you know, well, like see, doing something great. That's the crazy thing. Like, uh, not not half the reason, but like it must have been two years ago. Uh, I had a Freestyle Extreme magazine floating around in the van for probably a year or two at that point. And Rachel was just reading it on one of our drives home from wherever the hell we were going, always road tripping around Europe. Mm-hmm. And it was your story, your interview in Freestyle Extreme saying, I'm riding freestyle because what what the hell else am I going to do? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Um, that's crazy because I've looked up to this guy for so long um, and he's done everything. Like you've done everything. And then, you know, then to be in this position at night of the jumps and I was just like, fuck, you've still got the, like for me, the style is the best part. Like, so you've still got the style. You've got huge fucking tricks. Uh, let's see if Adam wants to come over. And I was just blown away when you said, yeah, yeah, I'll come. No, no problems at all. And so what, last year, um, for those who are listening who don't know, you ended up fourth overall in the world championship and you missed half of the events. Like <laughs> you were on the podium every single time, I think two thirds and two seconds. Got and lucky. What can I say? You got lucky and you're telling us now that you don't really, you know, you're not pushing it. You're just doing what you do. You're having fun. But yeah. you got to that level that you can do that. So yeah, well, I don't know. It's, it's a tough one, I guess, that you know you're so close, but yeah, to beat the guys it, that who is are true, right? Because is... it's like there's there's two tricks, right, that I could add to my to my repertoire and just be just be back in the action. Two tricks, mm-hmm. but man, I don't want to do that. But to go yeah. back to that, first of all, the interview, yeah, I do feel like that. Like I I have no other life skills. I'm gonna have to ride freestyle motocross <laughs> until. <laughs> Until oh, I've either, man. I don't even know what, until something happens and I've either made enough money to quit or until I just decide to start sweeping floors at the local bike shop. But <laughs> I enjoy doing it. Because you're not fixing just, the bikes. <laughs> yeah. I just don't want to, you know, like at some point I'd like to be able to slow down. I'd like to be able to pick and choose what I ride, when I ride, stuff like that. I can't do that right now. I have no other way to like support my family. I do enjoy doing it. It is scary sometimes. I do want to get out of this you know in one piece and yeah. uh where else was going with that oh yeah but like the night of the jumps dude i've had such a blast riding those and like 
just being doing contests again and just pushing yourself to to put a run together you know like just having that little bit of like all right here we go we got a minute and a half let's do it it's been really fun and i've really enjoyed that and i i wish there were more contests around i wish even if even if they didn't really matter that much like so what just let's just do make it a contest that it'll be fun i don't know get that spirit of competition back and everything but i don't want anybody to assume that reading an article like that i don't like what i'm doing like that's not it at all. It's a hell of a lot different than it was for me for all the years that I did it. You know, the money's different, the the sport's different, the everything is different. I for sure still enjoy it, but I think the average reader wouldn't really even understand how wide open I am all year long. Like I don't yeah. I don't get really the time to rest. I don't really have the extra money to rest. Like I'm going nonstop all the time. And then for the last five years, my kid's school is 45 minutes away from me. So I'm doing, yeah. yeah, Like I I had a meeting point at some time, but crooked family judges kind of screwed me on this one. But like I'm (laughs) every day that I'm home, I'm doing an hour and a half drive in the morning or no, it's about, it's a little over an hour. It's potentially going to be more now, but anyways, I'm doing about an hour in the morning, about an hour in the afternoon. I'm trying to ride in between that. I'm trying to be a freaking dude at home and catch up on life. And it's just, I know that sounds like pity party thing, yeah. which I'm not trying to do, but it, it makes it hard. I, I just, for the last five years, it's like, damn, like when do I get to that, relax? Never, you know, that's it. It's real world stuff. It's, um, it's not that rock star life that, that you, you know, people think it's, <laughs> yeah. you're in the real world, man. You got to yeah. do the real world things. Kids that's, and school that's runs life. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, so I don't, I don't mind school runs. I just mind that you know my that the courts allowed my son to be taken out of the school that he was in and put in another uh, one, yeah. forty five minutes away from me. I think that's, I think that's ridiculous. Because for all the listeners out there, I have joint physical and joint legal custody, fifty percent of everything. I still have to pay maximum child support in Nevada every month. Um, I could do all the driving to take them freaking everywhere. It's, it's a bummer. I really got hosed on that deal. But if you're a dude in the family court system, that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know anything about that sort of stuff. I've never been there. I hope I never (laughs) have to be there. You don't want to be. It sounds horrible. So uh, yeah, I mean, you've got to do what you got to do and, and whatever comes. So Yep. I'm glad you're getting it done either way. Um, <laughs> yeah. I could say it sounds terrible. It sounds horrible, man. Yeah. Hey, you know, I feel like, I don't know, life doesn't owe me anything, but yeah. be decent, work hard, things will work out, right? Exactly. That's it. So you're not interested in new tricks. What about new ramps? Because I remember talking to you just before, maybe it was just after Nitro World Games, with the moon booter. And I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure you told me at the time you were not interested in that ramp <laughs> at all. And then I think you got like a speed check from someone and it was, is it third gear to hit that ramp? I can't remember. Yeah. I don't know, I but either you, way. I'll, I'll give you a quick update on the whole story. When we first went to use it, I didn't want anything to do with it just because it looked insane. And we were <laughs> yeah. jumping it in the gear that you'd assume you'd jump it in second gear. Uh, we, we did a day riding it where we just kept pulling it back. Um, you know, we started super small. We had the airbag lander and everything and yeah. we were jumping it in second and, and it was fine. Like jumping it in second was good. It, it, we got it back to whatever they wanted the max distance to be, which was, I think almost 35 feet, which is what? second almost gear. Almost 35 yeah. feet. <laughs> it's second gear, just completely wide open wow. on a 250 at sea level. And That's then, crazy. um, yeah, when we had it up short, I I flipped it twice. I think I flipped it up to like 20 feet or something like that, which is nothing, but you're still going pretty high on that ramp at 20 feet. Yeah. And then we pulled it back another couple feet to where you had to start getting in the power a little bit. And it just, the thing flipped so fast all of a sudden because I, I think I got lucky the first two times I flipped it and I kind of almost chopped the throttle at the right time to where really? the flip was normal. So then the next time I had to really give it some gas to clear the gap. So I didn't chop the throttle and dude, that thing just went and like it flipped so fast off the ramp. I was, I was done. So, so I bail and like it hurt. And then we had the flat airbag after that. 
the next two days or the next day and i tried to figure out flipping in second gear and i just could not man i could not flip slow enough so kept trying kept trying started getting a couple where i could flip slow enough and it was it was super hard to control and then all of a sudden i over rotated one and i bailed and broke my wrist on a freaking airbag yeah so it wasn't wasn't stoked on the ramp but then for the next nitro tour Flew out early, stayed at Steve Minnie's, and I rode it every single day. And huh. Harry Bink and the guys were, they started jumping in third because they're like, dude, your bike's just, it's lugging a little bit. So it's like, it doesn't rip out from underneath you. So I'm like, oh, yeah. shit, I'll give it a try. Makes sense. Fly out there, stay at Minnie's. And it was like the first time I flipped it, I'm like, oh man, I can do this. Like, this is, this is the difference I needed. So yeah. started flipping it, still wasn't pumped on it. Um, and they started putting it in tours, wasn't pumped on it. We didn't really get a whole lot of time to ride on it, though, was the thing. Like, it would just, you know, there would be no practice days for this completely different ramp. And then all of a sudden, showtime would come, and it would just get set up, and you just you just you had to send it. Go. So it was a comfort level. I wasn't there yet. And as time went on, and they set up more practice days for us, and we got to ride it some more, and then most uh, mostly, like, this last Nitro games that I did – we had so much time on it. We had so many days and I just, I'd ride it all day. And then I was like, man, this thing's, it's still tricky because if you do give it a yank, it's gonna, you're going to land on your back. But if you kind of get it figured out, it's actually really fun. So that's yeah, cool. You, yeah. You just, you have so much time. And I think because the rotation's so slow and you don't really have to pull that hard, you kind of stay with your bike more than, yeah. you know, a 75 foot, uh, flip combo where you're kind of your your body naturally wants to keep floating away from it you kind of like stay with a bike so once i figured all this stuff out it, it's like dude this ramp is actually freaking awesome yes still very scary but awesome so yeah i probably would have told you to f off the first time you asked me to put it in a show but now <laughs> i'm down <laughs> so that that's what i'm thinking here like i'm always thinking about the future of freestyle and and you know it's it's had that huge wave up and we're on a pretty big one down where yeah. no one really knows how where where it's going to go how it's going to go <clears throat> is new ramps for new for you like is that something because you sound excited right now talking about it like even if you're just doing the same tricks off of a new ramp is that okay or would you think then we've got new ramps i can do something else i don't know like yeah it definitely opens up some possibilities the only bummer about it is it's such a big ramp that it also you know uh consequences for mistakes also get ramped up a little bit too so but I mean, if you look at world games and stuff like that, all right, guys are definitely doing new tricks on it for sure. And even a guy like me who doesn't want to do any new tricks, like I can do my other tricks better on that ramp than I can do on any other ramp. So if nothing mm-hmm. else, it does provide a different thing to fans to see like, oh my, you know, instead of seeing the same dead body flip you've seen yeah, a thousand times, now you're seeing that's the biggest one I've ever seen, which which that's, is cool. That's how you get fans, right? But honestly, exactly. more than new ramps, I I just think we need to do. I said it earlier. I think courses need to come back, even if it's not anything that insane. Just something visually appealing and different. I think is is what could provide some sort of resurgence to the sport. But is that ever going to happen? Are we ever going to have the space? Anybody willing to put the funding in? I don't know. They're the big questions. They're the, they're the big ones. That's what I'm working on, and I'm sure other people are as well. So hopefully, yeah. well, hopefully together we can to, all make it happen. Hopefully. Yeah, X Fighters was supposed to come back this year. You knew that, right? Yeah, 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 in Valencia. And, so that's yep, a shame. And and well, then, well, that was last month. It should have been on in June, right? Should have been on in June, and then they had another date scheduled for either July or August. I'm not sure. A backup date uh, yeah. that they were hoping all this shit would be blown over, but that canceled too. So bummer. And I don't know how much truth there is to this. You'd probably know more than me, but I heard Valencia this year and then there was talk or a potential of a tour next year. Oh, so I, if, I heard if there's of, any I truth heard to rumors. that, that put us back another year. Yeah, I heard rumors, but I, I honestly can't even remember who told me that. Um, and whether yeah, it's it's same deal. It's true. I don't know. Kind of like Honda's coming out with a fuel injected CR 250. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you got just, better chance just read of seeing, it on Facebook somewhere. <laughs> you got a better chance of seeing the Honda electric bike out before the uh, fuel injected two stroke. Yeah. So. Oh, I know. I was totally so, joking about that. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the what's the future then for for Adam Jones? Obviously, you've got your businesses up and running now. Like you, you're thinking ahead there for CBD. Yeah, yeah. Um, we do. We have them up there. Uh, the the CBD thing has been a nightmare, man. Just because really? it's so difficult to to deal with banks and CBD because it's still a lot of them. Um, they still put it in the same box as actual marijuana. You know. Oh. So okay. they, they just don't want to work with it. And it's been difficult. And then we, we had uh, just a trademark issue. What do you mean, issue. like with, with the banks? Like what, what's the real problem? So like, banks, are, are banks are federally insured. And federally, I think uh, CBD is still, I'm not sure. I know that they have separated it, but I think it's the close, uh, the close relation to marijuana, which is obviously, mm-hmm. I think, a Schedule One narcotic. The yeah. close relation to it is enough for them to say, we're not dealing with it. So- to get I credit I know, and things like that to build your business is that well the yeah so no the main thing is payment processors payment ah, processors okay. and depositing banks um, okay nobody wants to process payments for him I mean there's a lot of businesses that are considered high risk both of our businesses <laughs> actually are considered high risk businesses so we can't use typical processing solutions yeah. so that made both of them difficult from the get go but hey whatever you know we jumped straight in the deep end and we had to figure it out. And uh, we had 90, a couple trademarking issues. Sorry, we had a couple trademarking issues with a CBD company uh, initially, which we could have thrown money at, and we could have argued and went to court over. But you know what? There was something about the brand that me and Kim both were like, kind of like, ah, oh, man, I just don't, I don't know if that's exactly how we want it. So we just said, screw it. We'll, we'll write the letter. We'll say, sure, we're going to cease and desist, and with yeah. the name use, and we're going to. We're going to come up with something else, which we did, which now we're super pumped on power up health, which is, you know, that's the official name power up health, but power up. Yeah. Like we, we like it, like the way it looks, it's clean and it's CBD for now. And like we we're partnering with somebody coming up soon to do a couple uh, like nutritional supplements. And we nice. want to kind of branch into that and just be a health brand. You know, we want yeah. to do, we want to do the CBD, the stuff that can actually uh, improve your recovery and, we want to have the other stuff that can improve your recovery from your day-to-day workouts and your, your day-to-day stuff like that. So we want to have a health brand and it's been super slow since we've came back, but that's to be expected. It's a weird time in the world right now. And we've definitely thrown everybody that's following us for a loop with it. But, um, you know, I don't think either of us, I know I get frustrated a lot easier than Kim does about this stuff, but neither of us never assume that within six months, a year, two, three, even four years that these businesses are going to be killing it. We, we just wanted to, you know, while we had other things going on, we wanted to grow them. And then, you know, eventually they're making, they're making money. And we, yeah. we have things on the side that are making money for us. And Kim's, Kim's website's actually doing really good. Like her sales are, are picking up and, um, you know, she, she gets almost daily sales, sometimes two or three in a day. And some days she has none also, but yeah, that one, I don't know if anybody knows about what, that one, but that's that? it. It's in like an adult toy store. It's called lovelittleblackbox.com. It's lingerie and toys and all the fun couple stuff. And she runs everything on that site and the Instagram. And I think she does super kick ass on that. And Good just on kind that. of that, yeah, the persistence over the past year that she's done with that is now a year in, not even a year in, is definitely, it's shown that it has improved how much traffic the site gets, you know, she gets a couple hundred people a day on the site, which is, Whoa. which is awesome. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. really good. And yeah. to compare that to something else, power up CBD right now gets about 15. <laughs> Come on after this podcast, it could even be 16. Dude, if it's 16, <laughs> my gosh, I hope so. Uh, but yeah, these are, these are long term. Of all the people, are, oh, I'm sure the thousands and thousands that listen to this podcast, I'm joking. <laughs> but, um, you know, everybody has to go to this Power Up CBD or just just got to boost Adam's numbers right now. And then yeah, you'll feel good, me, you know. Just you'll give sit me at one home, day you'll be, in the 20s, please. <laughs> yeah, you'll be sitting at home looking at your numbers. Yeah, <laughs> kill yeah. it now. Yeah. Well, I'll drop a website link and it's Power Up 
www.love-store.com. That's the website. The other one is lovelittleblackbox.com. There's my my uh, sponsor There's plug blood. for the day. Perfect. No problem. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll send the invoice later. Ah, uh, no problem. I don't have any money to pay it, but go ahead and send it if you want. <laughs> yeah, no, that's it. And it sounds like the banks won't send it to me anyway. So <laughs> sounds like I got a chance of anything there. But yeah. I mean, the, the thing with starting any business and uh, yeah, it's probably better if you started it 10 years earlier. But if you didn't, Always. at least you've already started it. And yeah. 99% of success is just turning up. So, yep. Well, and you know what? There's, out. I have, I know I didn't, before I got divorced, I saved pretty much everything. I mean, my ex spent a lot of money that was unnecessary, but hey, that's part of the deal, whatever. I saved everything. I figured someday I'd figure out a way to use my money to invest in my future and in something after freestyle motocross. Uh, so, I just saved and I, I didn't, invest in anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't know what to do. And all I had was uh, a pile of cash, which felt yeah. pretty nice, to be honest with you. Yeah. And through uh, two and a half years of divorce, lawyers, and then final payouts, first of all, anybody that tells you it's 50-50 is full of shit. But between <laughs> okay. all that, yeah, between all of that, like everything I had saved was it, pretty much gone. You know, I had enough oh, to put really? Yeah, I had enough to put a down payment on a house and then I had a little bit of extra. So I said, you know what? I never did this before. I'm going to start doing this now. I took every penny extra I had and I invested in rental properties in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And oh. they've been great. You know, they're, they, they're super good cash flowing. And then, you know, we, we made another investment after that. And then now we've invested in these businesses, which the businesses are making absolutely nothing profit for us right now. But the potential eventually. So what I'm getting at is, yeah, I never made investments before. I mean, we can say, I wish I would have started doing this 10 years ago, but had I done this 10 years ago, I would have lost everything that I did anyway. in the divorce anyways. So yeah. I kind of, as much as it's a bummer that I don't have myself in order the way I'd like to be right now and that I lost so much. Well, you know, I starting over now and I'm doing all these things and, and they're, you know, they're, they're my things. They're buying Kim, yeah. Kim's things, but like I don't have the same relationship with Kim that I had with my ex. And we we talk about this stuff all the time. And it's just like we were young, and we both, you know, we yeah. both went through kind of a similar relationship in our past lives. Yeah. And um, you know, we look at it now, and we just think like we we were young. We thought we were doing the right things. We didn't really know what we were doing. We didn't really know what we wanted, and and we didn't really know what relationship should be like. So there was yeah. like a whole lot of differences to, to the past life and the previous life. But either way, the point of my story is I didn't start back then. And yeah. I could say, damn it. You know, I wish I would have started invested 10 years ago. I'd be so dialed and set. But the reality is I would have probably lost all that too. And now I've started this and I have, I have my stuff and I'm, I'm yeah. moving in the right direction and things are, things are good. You know, I'm building from what I have and, it's, I don't have the same opportunities with, you know, the insane cash flow that we had back in the day to, to yeah. make things happen, but I'm going to make things happen. I'm going to keep working hard for, That's I don't it. know, five, five more years was the plan, but it's probably going to be five more years starting next year. <laughs> now after, after this after year. After Corona, five more years. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, man. Um, like I, I'm, I actually, I'm happy with it, man. Yeah. I actually listened uh, to the Punk Rock Parsons interview that you did with him and, and I, I was listening actually quite a lot to you talking about the rental properties and, and all that as well. So it was just interesting that you brought that up again. Um, I mean, it's not like I, well, I've got a house in Australia that we had, but we've just rented out while we live in Europe. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, like, I, yeah, same thing. Like, I, I wish I did this 10 years ago. I yeah. still haven't. You know, I, still, I haven't branched out and I don't, I, I'm very risk averse when it comes to my money. Like I, I Me really, too, man. Me I, too. So this was I'm hard the biggest for me to tight do. Ass, biggest tight ass you'll ever see, but <laughs> I would, I'd love to just like get into like a couple of properties and just rent them out and, and whatever. Yep. But why, why did you choose Pittsburgh then? Well, I grew up in you're Pittsburgh, not there. actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I'm not there, but it is where I grew up. And when I first started looking, I said, all right, man, I have this much money. Like, I want to get a property. And I looked around the West Coast, and the West Coast is freaking expensive, right? So if you want to buy a single-family home, even if it's in kind of a 
trashy area, you're probably going to pay 250, 300,000. Uh, hmm. Your return, I don't even know. I, I didn't price out totally. I just looked at the numbers for properties. So let's yeah. say your return per month for rent is two thousand dollars, and then after all your expenses, you know, you're down, you're down to maybe a realistic fifteen hundred dollars a month on two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand uh, dollar house. Well, I started asking around in other states, and I asked yeah. my sister, who still lives back in Pittsburgh. I was like, "Hey, do you know any real estate agents? You know anybody that's?" that's good, that knows the area. And she's like, yeah, I have a friend, a longtime friend, I went to school with her. She's super smart. She does really well in real estate. So I started talking to her and I'm looking at all these places and the pricing's insane. <laughs> like, really? I got, I got one duplex, so two units. I got one duplex for $80,000. What? Yeah, I put 35 into it to make it really nice. And I mean, that place now rents for, we've rented out in bad times, so that winter's a bad time to get renters. You can't really get max yeah. rent in winter because you're kind of just getting whoever is actually willing to move in winter in Pittsburgh. So technically they should rent for a total of 1800 a month, but we're getting 1650 a month, which is good. So yeah. I got 1650 a month coming in off of $115,000 investment. Yeah. And then the other one was 110 with about the same return. So I just was looking at these and going, man, like, I can really rent these out for this amount and I'm buying them for this amount. So I did that. And then, um, I've had those for almost two years now and they've, they've been great. Yeah. I mean, I have my, my expenses that pop up here and there, but the cash flow covers it and, um, everything's been really good with those. So I, uh, now, you know, just kind of trying to read up a little more on it and realize, you know what? I probably did do that the wrong way. I probably shouldn't have bought those outright. I probably should have yeah. put a mortgage on them and like I could take, you know, because the game is take a hundred thousand dollars and buy four units with, or, you know, $25,000 yeah. down and let the renter pay them off. You're going to end up with the same amount of rent in your pocket per month. And then after 15 years, your renter has paid them off and you have now four properties worth a hundred thousand dollars a piece. So Exactly. I don't know. I didn't know exactly what I was doing, but it was, I guess, just the courage to start and just say, you know what, I'm going to do this and see it, ha see it work long enough that yeah, I was able to say, you know what, this is good. This is a good investment. This is something that I think is fairly safe if I do it right and don't, you know, over leverage myself too much. I think it's, I think it's a good thing. So I'm learning. So I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm, I've been trying since this has all been. <laughs> Uh, since we've been doing absolutely nothing, I've been trying to get my hands on another unit. That's yeah. kind of basically been the only freaking productive thing I've done in the last two months. So wow. we're, we're moving. I'm in contract on another one now and hopefully that'll be, you know, hopefully that'll be a good deal as well. And I don't know. I'm, I'm trying, Steve, I'm trying to make the Wait. most of, of what I have left. Yeah. <laughs> whatever you whatever the judge let you have at the end of it <laughs> exactly yeah ah oh, man well it sounds like you you're a lot smarter now than before by the sounds of I've, the way this this conversation has gone Steve, we've got, let's not use the word smart okay okay then you've improved <laughs> you've improved uh, there you go on the outlook from, yeah. from before until now yeah they they're, they're Hopefully there's light at the end of the tunnel. Hopefully. Are you actually writing? That's probably the big question. Are you Oh, you know, we didn't even moment? talk about this. I, I, uh, separated my AC joint in my shoulder and what? I think I might've broke my hand too, but I only got my shoulder x-rayed. So I'm, I've been out for, it'll be six weeks on Wednesday. So a day after this podcast podcast comes out, it's six weeks that I've been injured. Come on. There's Dude. been videos coming out with trick tips. I thought you were still riding. So the last <laughs> trick tip was the last time I rode. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And what happened is I was actually, I took the kids to this little bike park in Reno and it's a super mellow downhill thing. I took my hardtail and I didn't even know if I was going to be able to ride because I had all the kids there. Like Raven wanted to go there on her bicycle and like, you got to stay right with her. You know, she's, she's five years old and she's a wild one. So yeah. we got there and I just did a couple laps on like the, they have like a little downhill strider thing that she was ripping on. So I do two laps with her. The boys are, uh, they're all going and doing runs on the bigger stuff. And uh, a couple of my buddies showed up. So the boys come up the same time I come up and I'm like, Hey guys, go down a lap with Raven. I'm just going to go down the trail. So I do it once and I'm like, Oh, that's pretty fun. Super mellow. Dude, there's two, 
there's two jumps on it that are like even worth mentioning. Yeah. And uh, I do one and then I do a couple more runs with Raven and then same deal. We all come back up at the same time. So I'm like, Hey dude, stay with Raven. I'm going to take a run with my buddies one time. So I'm in the middle of the pack, one buddy in front, one buddy behind and we're going down. And then I, there's like a big right hand bull turn and keep in mind, this is all going downhill. So like you're, you're going fairly fast right hand bull turn and then out of the bull turn there's a roller into a left and then that's where like the two mentionable jumps are yeah i come out of the right hand turn and i'm like all right one crank (laughs) and i'm gonna pump this and then have enough speed for those jumps dude and i just go for that one hard crank and the fucking chain blows off oh yeah and it was like it wasn't like i'm just doing a nice simple pedal it was like i went for like one gnarly crank you know so (sighs) it was like I eat the bars and I go down like just, dude, I was on the ground before I knew what the hell happened. And I think what happened was that roller in front of me, I just body slammed that thing. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I was like, ah, I get up and I'm like, I'm all right. I'm all right. I hang out for a little bit and I'm like, I'm hurting pretty bad. We got to go guys. (laughs) So I actually loaded the kids bikes up and then by the end of the night, I couldn't lift my shoulder. I ended up getting an x-ray. Fuck, so right there on. was a AC separation and, um, it's still, dude, it's gnarly. I had some people telling me, Hey, two weeks, you'll be good. And like, I'm not in any pain really, but like I have no strength. So I've been working on that. Uh, been trying to just get in the gym every day, uh, and really work that and just do saunas do, uh, I've been using like some more infrared light things, mm. uh, infrared light therapy when I'm sitting on the couch and yeah. Lots of CBD cream and just about was taking power a lot up. of ibuprofen, but not yeah. not so much ibuprofen anymore. But uh, yeah, oh, so yeah, that was that was a bummer. I, I found out about the ibuprofen problem after my hip. Like my my stomach is not good. It does really not like ibuprofen. Uh not as much as I was taking it. Like I to even get out and walk and do stuff like i was chewing on them like m&ms or whatever yeah i used to take them a lot too just with all the riding i was doing something was always hurting and then finally i was like you know what this really can't be great for me so stop doing it and apparently (laughs) it is helpful for certain things but it also causes a lot of a lot of issues so i do use ibuprofen when i need it but if i don't need it oh i just avoid it yeah i i've got to the point where i need it but I just know it's doing more damage inside that yeah. I'll just deal with the pain. And as when it gets bad enough, then I just go in for the new hip. So yeah, I've just got to that point. Like I've just dealt with them. I'm like, fuck it. Then I'll just get the hip because like, yeah, the ibuprofen as much as I was, just, that I was taking it. Yeah. It, it wasn't too good. It's not good. Yeah. No. Nope. Ah, man. So, so they actually coming all the way back then to the very, very start. This is, when I was saying, you know, if you're injured in Corona times. Yeah. Well, actually, you know, I was thinking, well, it's kind of like having a holiday without being injured, but you're having the holiday. You are injured. You're yeah. not even riding. You're not even doing what you really want to do anyway. That's why you just on this downward you know, spiral. When I first started the, or when this all first started and events started canceling, it's like we were talking about like, Oh, it's a forced vacation. I wonder if it'd be better if you were just hurt and you couldn't do anything well let me tell you it's that's not. why <laughs> that's why so now that we've because we didn't establish that right at the start now i understand and it didn't work out that well like I, yeah i mean do you I, have... yeah, I wasn't riding a whole lot before this just because it's like what am i gonna do i'm gonna wear out all my shit yeah. i'm gonna spend x amount of money on fuel and new parts and everything just for what because i didn't even have a time frame you know i was like if you give me a month if you gave me a week and said hey you got a show in a week shit yeah i'll be ready ready. but like if i knew hey stuff's potentially coming up in a month like no problem i'll start riding then but until then Mm. like for one why risk your body which that didn't really work out for me for two (laughs) why burn up your stuff and for three like I don't, I don't even know what for three is. So I guess it's only <laughs> exactly. one or two. <laughs> but, but for what? Uh, but for what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Oh, that sucks. Well, I mean, at least on the other hand, you've got plenty of time for the future and the businesses and the investments and thinking about what you're doing. And hopefully hopefully the break helps in the end, one way or another. Hopefully yeah. uh, you, you become clearer in the mind for for the future life outside of freestyle. If you've only got 
a five year time frame, which yeah, I'm guessing if you're anything like me, was always five years. Like I always <laughs> said, I always no. said I'll ride for another five years and then I'm done. And then see, I, I got I never, to thirty. This is, the, this is the first time I put a time frame on it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I always thought thirty was more than enough, but then back then when I was twenty or a bit older, I was like, ah, anyone that's thirty, like they're almost done, and and it's all yeah. Done. Just go go and get into the real world like everybody else. And then I got to thirty and realized that I was having more fun than ever. And I think yep, at thirty two or thirty three, just before my crash, like that was my best year. My best yeah. year was then, and I'm like. Why would I stop now? I'm going to 40. I'm if I can get to 45, yeah. I'll, I'll go there. Yeah, it's like honestly, <laughs> the only thing I want with this five year deal is just to I want to be able to at least slow down and do things on my own, my own terms. Like, mm-hmm. I love writing, man, and it, it gives me, I especially notice this now that I have no sense of purpose with nothing to do, it gives me a sense of purpose. And like the days that I'm yep. super stressy and stuff like that, like. I tell you what, one good day of riding up even just at my practice spot and maybe making a cheesy little video about it, it gives me just a feeling of satisfaction. And I like it when I have a good day. I like doing this. So I don't need to stop. I'm not like dying to get off the bike. I just want to hustle for the next five years. And then I don't know, like, what am am I going to do? What is going to provide me with any purpose that can even come close to what this has after this is done. And I'll tell you what, from sitting around and doing nothing right now, I don't know that there is anything. <laughs> I can work yeah. out. I can eat healthy. I can be healthy. I can, you know, take in information about health, which I enjoy. I enjoy health. But, like, that doesn't do it for me, you know? Like, riding Being the, the dirt king bike of the gym. does it for me. Not yeah, well, I don't, think I'll ever, I don't think I'll ever be king of the gym. Let's not go that far. <laughs> yeah, I I can completely agree with you because I've been forced into that position and it sucks. Like, yeah, uh, well, that's not giving me much it, hope, dude. So I'm really, I'm going to go work out my shoulder now that you said that. Keep, keep <laughs> Got to make sure I can it. get back on the bike. Man, that's like, ah, oh, it, it sucks. Like it sucks when it's, um, when it's forced that you just can't get yeah. back on and it like i just think now like i wish i did the things i wanted to do on a bike back then you know like when i was saying i wanted to try body varial and and yeah. i wanted to try all these different things i think i did two i had two attempts at a vault at clinton's house and they were horrible and yeah i didn't sounds like mine at miller's house yeah and then actually before tucker did the cali roll because i did a lot of um you know seat bounce takeoffs holding on doing like road overs and road over strippers and whatever and i said to clinton way 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 back before taka i'm like i reckon i could do the vault but just holding on to the rear fender no way (laughs) and and clinton's response was oh fuck off that would be so not don't (laughs) even think about it you're not doing that in my phone pit (laughs) <laughs> and then I thought about that trick for like six months and I thought, no, yeah. Clinton, Clinton told me it's crap. I'm not going to do it. It's shit. So I, uh, I never did it. And then I was watching you X Fighters. Window, dude. I was watching X Fighters one, three in the morning time, you know, on the, on the laptop. And, oh, Tucker just did that trick that I was thinking about. <laughs> The, the Clinton told me the shit. The super dumb one, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, now now sitting here in 2020, I'm just like, wish I tried that. But yep. whatever, you can't change it. So it is what it is. What it Agreed. Is. So, yeah. No, man, well, uh, I guess I've probably used up more than enough of your time on uh, international Will Smith kicked the aliens' asses day. So... <laughs> Thank you so much. That's um, a good one. Yeah, oh, I mean, I, I can't think of anything else that independence. I mean, okay, you you got rid of the English and all this sort of stuff, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm surprised that you you joined me on. No, hey man, right, I'm, I'm I'm happy surprised. to do this. I this is my third <laughs> podcast. My first was super rough. Uh, it just didn't. I didn't feel like it flowed. I felt like I never wanted to do another podcast again. Then oh. Doug. Yeah, Doug hit me up and I, I did that one with him tentatively and I really enjoyed it just because, you know, I we're just we're just dirt bike dudes that yeah. love freestyle that talk about the life that we live and you know, I live in Reno, Nevada and all my buddies that I moved out here from Pennsylvania to hang out and ride with 
quit writing. So yeah. <laughs> I don't have anybody to talk about this shit with anymore. Hey, you can go play it's golf nice. though. You can go play yeah, dude, golf. I've tried that, man. I spend more time looking for my ball. <laughs> no, nah, I mean, but honestly, I, I listened to the one with, uh, with punk rock. It sounded awesome. So uh, yeah, I, 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 I really did enjoy about. that one. No, no, no. Like I said, that was the one that I did that one. And I was like, Oh, you know what? This is fun. I like this. So I was happy to do this. And if you ever, if you ever are short guys, we can just, uh, we'll just dive into, two. uh, old days of freestyle motocross part two, Adam Jones complaining about how good life used to be part two. <laughs> exactly. We can find out really why you were called angry Adam. Oh, uh, didn't, do you, even, do you, didn't even touch on that on this one. Do you not and know not that? Going Are you kidding me? We can't tell the people now. No, no, no. Because I really <laughs> like the, the whole idea of this, why I wanted to do the podcast was at events, getting the guys like having a beer, sitting down and doing this in person. It's going to be way more fun than, you know, yeah. however many thousand kilometers away so all right no, well, no, we'll man. save Let's it for that one but it. i just want to preface it by saying do you know who got me into freestyle motocross who who got me my start my first event and took me around no i don't you don't even know that no should i not say it no not now 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 we've got to like give a reason for people to come back because i think they're <laughs> okay. already starting to stop coming back to listen to these things but yeah. all right <laughs> next time we talk about we'll talk about my origin in freestyle motocross where i got started there's you a big what? name. There's I'm... a big name in freestyle motocross that actually was the reason that I got started actually competing. That's cool. I'm yeah. glad you said that because that was my. Well, now people Let's are just going to research it in between, and they're not even. Gonna... No, they're not. Don't tell they're them. Not to... even shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Don't research. Just Google. Come Google back. is down, folks. Do not yeah. go there looking for information. Exactly. Fake, fake news. Exactly. It is come back here every two weeks and you'll find <laughs> out. No, actually my third question that I had written down for this, which completely went off in tangents all over the place was how did you get into FMX? So I'll leave that one. We can do the next one in person when night of the jumps is back up and running September. 5th okay. In Basel. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sleep till then. I just want to tell the damn story. <laughs> I don't think anyone can sleep because I'll be waiting to hear it. So yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. <laughs> Thanks so much for, for joining us anyway. Um, no problem. Hopefully dude. it wasn't too boring for everyone. Nah. Well, awesome oh, for me. I guess I and can't speak for them. Exactly. No, it was awesome for me. So I'm stoked you, you can do it and uh, have fun today with, um, with the family and the celebrations. For sure, man. I appreciate you having me on. Had a blast talking and I uh, hope everybody enjoyed it. Absolute legend. All right. See ya. Later. There you go. I think Adam has just sold this better for you to come back and listen to the part two of the Adam Jones story in the future. I really want to find out about this angry Adam story and how he got into freestyle motocross because that's all I ever heard about from the old TV shows more than a decade ago. Angry Adam, da da da, he's gone huge, angry Adam. So I want to know, where did that name come from? I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Rothaus Brewery, based in the Black Forest region of Germany. They don't make cakes, but they do make some of the best damn beers you'll ever taste. And in particular, the alcohol-free Tannen Zapfler beers, which taste just the same as the real deal. Without their support, we probably wouldn't even have got to this many episodes. And so I can't thank them enough for helping me out here and bringing you more stories about freestyle motocross and keeping the dream alive. Check the links in the show notes from this podcast on where to find a Tannen Zepfler near you all around the world. After you've ordered a new box of Tannen Zepfler beers, head on over to the powerup-store.com and pick up all the CBD products you need to heal up and feel better. Adam has offered for all of the listeners here to try out any of the products with a huge 20% discount. And the discount code is Riders Lounge 20. Simply add it to your cart as you go to the checkout on the online store for 20% off and free delivery over $99. Thank you again for tuning in and to help others find out about this podcast or to get some of the discounts, please leave a nice big five-star rating and if you can leave a review in whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on, it would help so much. I hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you soon.